Last week, Finance Minister Bill Morneau revealed that Canada is set to post the largest deficit since World War II. The Liberals estimate a deficit of $343 billion this year as a result of spending on the COVID-19 pandemic. Peter Sashaki from Everything Financial joins us this morning to talk about how this could affect your personal finances. Good morning, Peter. Good to see you. Good to see you, Kara. Good morning. Okay, so a lot of people, when they heard that number, $343 billion deficit, probably were thinking, oh my gosh, how in the world are we going to pay for this? So how is the country going to pay for this? Well, everything's on the table. Uh, you'll see income tax will be higher at some point. You'll see probably, I wouldn't be surprised, an increase in GST, change in capital gains rates. Like there's, there's nothing they won't look at to... Um, increase taxes to pay for this but remember the deficit and the debt were on their way up before COVID-19 so don't buy into the COVID-19 excuse that it's all because of COVID-19 there was a lot of fiscal irresponsibility before that and of course these items needed for COVID-19 have just made it worse. Right, all of these um, um, uh, handouts to people to uh, help keep people Everywhere. employed and to help uh, keep companies with uh, uh, people on the payroll. So where will people start to feel the impact of this in their everyday life? Yeah, they'll feel it right away at when some measures pass and tax rates change and so on in the next year. They'll feel it right away in their, in their um, paychecks. When you start getting less back every week on your paychecks. Now there's nothing been passed yet, nothing even been floated out there yet, but you'd be delusional to think it's, you know, it's not gonna happen. It's only a matter of time. And corporations will probably feel it with, feel it with changes in tax rates, but if you start to attack the people who are employing people, that will hurt the bottom line. Because if you can't hire people, those people can't pay taxes. So it's a slippery slope that the Liberals will probably go down to try and raise taxes. And there are uh, some programs that are still in place, but you know, as we move along here in this process and try to get the economy going again, how long do you think until we start to um, feel the impact of maybe the raising of the taxes or, or some of the things that you've mentioned? Probably by the end of this year, but people can help. And one of the and I, I don't want to sound where I don't care because I do because I, I know a lot of people in these situations. But people can help, and the best way people can help is get off the CERB if you can and get a job. And I was out last night with some business owners and they are just screaming to get employees. They can't get people and they say, well, the employee worked part-time making $1,700 a month, you know, students in a lot of cases, university students, et cetera, or just part-time employees. And they said, well, why would I go back to work for 1,700 a month if I can continue to collect 2,000 a month? So we say don't make emotional decisions when it comes to finances. I think on this one, the government made a bit of a knee-jerk emotional reaction with the CERB. Peter, I have to, I'm going to have to cut in with you on this because I think that there's a lot of people who were put into a position where they had nothing to go to and they had a choice between, yeah. you know, putting food on their table and paying their rent. And so that, um, that CERB was a lifeline for them. For those ones, absolutely. But for the people who had jobs, that we know of cases, a lot of people who just left their jobs because... I'll take the serve instead. And now the employers are saying, come back. So we're encouraging people, those who can and get a job, get a job because the unfortunate thing with the serve is, it's going to have to end at some point. And when it ends at some point, you don't wanna be on the outside looking in. You wanna try and get one of those jobs while they're still available. Because they will, obviously there will be Less and, them, less and less available as more people go back to work. And people are going to have to sort of uh, relook at how they do their financial planning as a result of all of this. Peter Sashaki with Everything Absolutely. Financial, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you Thanks, next week. Thanks, Gary. Have a great day. Thanks, Peter.